Hello, I'm David Sparks from the Max Sparky Labs. In the labs, we explore the intersection between productivity and Apple technology every week. There's tutorial videos and meetups and all sorts of great content, and we'd love to have you join. Just go to maxsparky.com slash join. Here's just one video from the labs. I hope you enjoy it. Hey gang, in a recent blog post, I shared my home screen and it led to a bunch of you writing to ask if I've lost my mind. I'm gonna show you how I built this home screen and you can decide, is it madness or is it genius? Okay, so here's my lock screen and uh, you've got the Max Sparky logo there. So you can tell I'm in Max Sparky focus mode. Now when I swipe up, there's my new home screen. Like, what have I done? Okay, so let me explain it to you. Uh, on the widget side, this is all widget smith generated widgets. So I'm gonna show you that in a minute. There's one at the top and then there's two down the right side. Uh, yes, I have a hearing aid examination. I hate to admit it, but I think I need them. Uh, then on the left side, I've got the uh, some icon launchers and shortcuts launchers, and the bottom of the dock is a shortcut launcher. The first thing I'd note is that the dock is the same color as the background, so you don't see it. The trick here is you've got to have the phone in dark mode, so I've got it in dark mode, and the dock color, and this is the probably the most important number you're going to hear in this, is two, four, two, four, two, four, three, two, fours in a row. That is the exact shade of gray that is used for the dock on the iPhone. So if you make the background of your phone the same color as the dock, then the dock disappears. So that's all there is to it. In fact, if I go down and change the dock dark to, uh, to light mode, you'll see, well, there's the dock, it's there. But when I change it to dark mode, it disappears. So I think that's kind of a cool little trick. So the dock is gone and the whole thing is gray. Uh, now, the icons under the dock are uh, shortcuts I've shared before. The, the left one with the teacup, that's personal. So anything I do there is personal stuff that I want to do. Uh, the the bolt one is Max Sparky stuff, and that's Max Sparky stuff that I want to do. And so I treat my phone contextually. I don't open an app. I actually have a shortcut start an action for me. And most of the stuff I do on my phone is triggered by one of those two icons. And it's just a choose from menu script. I've shared it in the labs before. You guys know about that. The one to the right, the gear is my AI one. I, I think I want to replace it with a robot, but I haven't decided yet. But these are all the AI tools I'm testing. That's why I'm getting so much content out on, on AI right now, because there's a lot going on and I'm trying to keep up with it. All right. Um, then on the left side, there are some icons. The left one is the phone app, and that's a real basic shortcut. I made a folder in shortcuts called app launchers and there's one for the phone. It just opens the phone app. That's all it does. This is the way everybody customizes their home screen with custom icons. Uh, the trick is you set it up by saying add to home screen and then you click the little button for a picture. And I save to my photos app a bunch of pictures. And you can see there's one for a phone icon. That's an SF symbol that I saved and it's got a background color. Guess what color it is? You know, 242424. Because two, two, when you make the background the same color as the desktop and you go ahead and add it to the screen, the icon border disappears. And that's why it just blends in like that. So when I made two of them, I'll get rid of that one. I did the same thing for Safari. So you've got Safari down there. This one that looks like a messages bubble was built the same way, but it's a more advanced shortcut. This is a choose from menu shortcut that just launches apps. It does messages, Slack, Discord, Mail, and Fastmail. The only action under each choose from menu is open the appropriate application, but it allows me to get all those apps under one button. So if I hit that button, then I can choose which one to open up, and then I don't have to put a bunch of junk on my home screen. It also doesn't show me message counts, and it makes it more friction to get to those apps which to my mind is a feature, not a bug. And then I did the same thing with the books. The books is writing and reading stuff. So if I want to dash off something to drafts or do a whisper memo or read something in Substack, uh, uh, writing and reading are all combined there. And of course, I also have the action button and a lot of other ways to kind of trigger this stuff fast. So those are the app icons I've got on the screen, just four of them, but you can see they actually launched quite a few applications. Now, getting to these uh, widget smith widgets, David Smith does a great job with the widget smith app. I made a medium sized widget and I put that materium super about opus. It's Latin saying that the, the results were better than the ingredients. Basically, I love that. That's my goal in life. When they put me in the ground to say, 
He did a lot with the little he had to work with. Now, uh, when I did it, I chose the text. You know, I wrote the text in. I chose the theme. I chose the font. They have a feature in this where you can set a custom theme, and you need to do that because what you want to do is scroll to the bottom on the background and make sure that you put in that hex code 242424 for the background. And when you do that, that way, when you save it to the screen, it asks you update the theme everywhere. Yeah, because you want all of the widgets you make to have that same color in the background. And the advantage is now, again, the background disappears. Usually these widgets have some sort of background color that distinguishes them from the rest of the device. And I did the same thing for these two small widgets. Uh, if you look, there's a small one for date and time. I like that one and it animates when the time changes. So it's kind of nice. Again, David Smith is really good at this stuff. And then the upcoming events is also gonna show you the next event on your calendar. All of these have the same background color, 242424, and the result is you get this great looking home screen. Now, if I switch focus modes, I go to personal. Now, it's the same home screen, except there's a teacup on top instead of the Max Sparky Bolt. And the lock screen also has the teacup. And I did made one for podcasting and some of the other focus modes I made, but it's all very simple and very subtle. But man, do I really like this. Now, I'm sure Apple will eventually redesign the UI and I'll be tempted to go back to the traditional home screen. But I've been using this for a few weeks now and I'm really digging it. I'm going to give you a, a gray image that's the 242424 color that you can use for your background if you want to build your own. If you decide to build your own, let me know and send me a screenshot of it. I'd like to see what you do. Like maybe you'll have some other cool idea send some screenshots. Maybe I'll send out a collection of the screenshots to the labs when I get these from other people that try and take off on this idea. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the Max Sparky Labs.